Good evening and welcome to this uh, this presentation which we are going to be doing today. Well, today we're going to be talking about learning about investing in property. My name is Roger Galway. I'm a branch manager and researcher here in Victoria, and I'm very proud to be part of this of the club and presenting this today. So what we're going to what are we going to do today? We're going to learn. Uh, sorry, before we go into that, we are going to be today. We're going to hear from Anthony Edwards, who's an experienced property investor. Myself is uh, who who also is a branch manager, and Anthony is a property mentor. And we're also going to hear from Joe Linko later on uh, uh, from a broker's perspective, and he's going to give us a very good uh, uh, update on finance. Okay, so we're going to start off straight away. Please make sure that you mute yourself, and if you have any questions, there's a question box, and if you want to put in any questions or anything, please feel free to do that. We're, we'll try and answer them as we go, but if we don't, we will get back to you and answer your questions as best as we can, okay? Because we've got quite a few people on online today. Anyway, who is Property Club? So let me start off with and tell you a little bit about the club. We're a national organization. We've been, we've been going for the last 27 years. We, we were... Uh, Kevin Young, the founder of the club, uh, uh, started the club in 1994. And what we what we are doing is we are meant are uh, as a property mentor, we are there to help other people, and we have experience ourselves, and we've been through this process a few times, and therefore we mentor other people. And all we are doing is we are guiding you along this journey. And Anthony will talk a little bit more about that. We've got a lot of bargaining power because we've got 80,000 members across the country, and internationally as well. And so, therefore, in, especially in this current environment with, with COVID and with lockdown, and we are over half the country is in lockdown. But in, in having said that, we're still in surviving, we're still going very well, and we're still doing something right. Okay. And what we've got is we've got over 20,000 properties which have settled through the club. And there's been a lot of people, there's over 5,000 people who have bought more than a million dollars worth of property through the property club okay and that's that's huge for us because our way of advertising is through word of mouth and our referrals are very very strong so therefore what we want is we want you to have a good experience and therefore we can share that with other people what you won't get from us we are not a we are not sales people trying to flog you something which we don't know about okay we are here about giving you real education we're not here to sell you something and walk away from you we're here to support you along this journey. We do not have any BS, and you will. We will give you both the pros and cons, and we're very open in how we discuss things with you. Okay, and there's no ghosting. You will be supported. You will remain supported right through the process and ongoing. In fact, just yesterday I had a member who's been a member for 10 years, and she had bought this property 10 years ago, and she was asking me questions about that, and we were able to help her with with that, uh, give her some assistance in how she can talk to the agent and she was having issues with her property. So that's what we do. So what are we going to cover today? We're going to cover why property and why the club and why we use the club and why the club has that support and why you have the support and a team behind you. We're going to give you, as I said about, Joe's going to talk about, about the finance and where we'll give you a lending update because there's some important things to, to take care, to listen and to understand about investing in property and the finance side. And again, the tips and traps about why why you invest in property and about taking action. Again, that's a, it's it's all well and good hearing things, but if you don't take action and you don't do something different, nothing is going to help. You, nothing is going to help you. So, what are we here today? We are here today to learn about being financially self-reliant, and that's something you have to ask yourself. Okay, do you? How do you feel about being financially self-reliant? Now, again. Each of us, we've got, we've got quite a number of people online. And again, each of you will have different uh, outlooks towards your financial independence. Okay? What do you consider financially independent? Some people may say, oh, well, I need to have a million dollars in my bank account. Some may say, no, if I have 50,000, a regular income of 50,000, I'm happy with that. So whatever your financial independence is, that's your prerogative. And it's something you need to answer so what lifestyle choices do you want? You know, some people want to travel every every year. Of course, in, during this COVID time, we can't travel. So it's good because we are saving our money. And let's use our money somewhere where we, where we are going to get a benefit from that. And then once we invest in properties and all that, then you can take holidays, you can go for, you can buy cars and all sorts of things, okay? The biggest thing is, do you have these choices in your retirement? And that's what you've got to think about. You've got to think about where are you now 
And if you want to, if you're young, okay, you've got 20, 30 years to retire. When I say retire, it's not about basically sitting in an armchair on the porch of your front door, and that's not that's not the outlook you want. But just basically, what are you looking for in the future, and what choices do you have? For me, my my biggest thing is I want to be able to choose what to do, when to do, and how to do it. That's for me. That's what financial independence is. I don't want to be worried about where am I going to get. I'm not thinking about my next meal, but I'm thinking about what choices I have when I want when I when I uh, want to retire. And what you also need to think is how are you going to make this happen? And this is a big, this is a good start that you're learning about investing in property, and we use property as the vehicle to get us to where we want to go. Okay, right. Now, if you look at if you look at the next the next slide, will you be will you be relying on the age pension in your retirement? You know that 80% of people who retire are retiring on the pension. And that is not much. The maximum pension in Australia is thirty-seven thousand seven hundred dollars a week. Okay, that's for a couple. That's not much at all when you think about it. But eighty percent of our of people retire in that sort of thing. There's only three percent of people who retire who are financially independent. I know where I want to be. I want to be in that three percent. Where you want to be, that's your choice. You have a choice and to decide where you want to be. People say, oh, superannuation will take care of me. Well, the average superannuation payout, as you can see on the screen, is 270,000 for a male and 157,000 for a female. How long is that money going to last you? Not long at all. And the Australian uh, Superannuation Fund Authority says that you need at least $60,000 per year to live a modest uh, life in retirement. Okay? So your, your, uh, the pension is only going to give you just about 60%. So therefore, what are we doing to help us in, in regards to the, the prop, the, how are we going to help us in retirement? So let's do the calculations about this, okay? If we want to retire at 65 and living to 82, that's, that's 17 years, okay? And you need $60,000 per year. You need over a million dollars in super. You need to have, how many of us have a million dollars? If you want to retire at 60 and you live till 82, which is the average, average age of, uh, uh, average age at the moment, you need 1.3 million. Okay, are you on track to, to to achieve this? Ask yourself that. Look at your superannuation balance. When last have you looked at your superannuation statement and see how much you have in there? Now again, some of us do have that, and that's good. But a lot of us, over 90% of people, do not have that, or do not have access to that sort of funds. So this is what we want to do. Is what can we do to to help ourselves? What we say is property investment is the one which can help us achieve our goals. And we use property as the vehicle to get us where we want to go. Why property? Well, the reason why we use property is because we have high leverage. Okay. And what we mean by that is we use a little bit of our money and we use a lot of the bank's money to invest in property. And that gives you the upper hand when you want to, when you want to build a portfolio over a period of time. Okay. And again, more than happy to discuss this with, with, with anyone. Also, it, also the next thing with property is it gives you a long-term capital growth. What do we mean? What do we mean by that? It allows us over a period of time to grow in value. And if you take your you, now, for example, you take your own property. If you bought it 10, 15, 20 years ago, what is it worth now? Or you take your parents' property, what they paid for it, and what it's worth now. Okay. So that's what it's kept. That's what capital growth is all about, and that's what you want to work towards. And again, the, you need minimal cash because why do we say that? Because you can use the equity or you, of another property, or you can use if you want to put savings, or you can use equity, or you can use another property as security to get to. So you don't have to have twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollars sitting in your back pocket to put down to, to to start your process. Okay. Then the other thing is you get big rental income, and the rental income is what is going to help you service your loan. The next thing is you have your tax savings, and we'll talk a little bit about tax savings uh, a little later. And that's what's going to help you between the, your rental income and your tax savings is basically going to pay for your property and where you don't have to contribute anything. And we'll talk a little bit about that. The risk for property is very low. There is a risk in any, any investment. There's a risk, but the, 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 it's very low in that regard. Why do we say that? 
because the bank is willing to lend you 90, 90 and sometimes even up to 95% of the value of the property. Now the bank, the bank, they have to make sure that their security is strong and therefore you're able to borrow that money. So but if you want to buy shares or something, uh, the banks will only lend you 50 or 60% of that value compared to buying property, which they will lend you 90, up to 90, sometimes even 95%. So that's what we consider, okay? And when you look at it, over the last 25 years, the median price has grown by 412%. That is huge when you look at the, in, from a big scheme of things, okay? Over the last, from, from, so when you look at the data over there, it is showing for the last 25 years, the growth has been phenomenal. And, and yes, the units are slightly lower than houses, but as you can see according in the graph, both are traveling up, traveling together and uh, working in the same way. And why do you say, and when you look at it, we've had all sorts of things happening during in these challenges, okay, during the last 25 years. We've had the stock market crash of 1980s. Uh, who remembers in, in the 1980s, we had 17% interest rates. There was a recession in the 1990s, high unemployment. Uh, the Gulf War was there. The introduction of GST was in 2000, and everyone said, oh, that's the end of the world. But what happened? It, it all just went through, and we were fine. September 11 came, and yes, we're still feeling the repercussions of that, but that's, that's, that's all right. We're still, life still goes on. There was a big stock market crash, as we know, in 2007. But again, that's the global financial crisis was there. We still continue. But the, all these things, then we had, we had the, the, now we are in this global pandemic and it's affecting the whole world, you know, but again, why does property always grow? Because people will always need somewhere to live and you need a roof over your head. So that's something why people, uh, pop, uh, property is our vehicle to go. Now I'm going to introduce Joe Linko. Okay, Joe, sorry, Joe is going to be, is going to be presenting now. And he's going to be talking a little bit about about his the finance. So just, just give us a moment while we while we do some admin stuff over here. Just a moment. Thanks, Roger. So while uh, Roger's just giving me um, uh, control of the screens, uh, I've been with the Property Club now for, uh, since about 2010. So, and um, I do work with a lot of property investors. Uh, and I guess our role as a mortgage broker or as a mortgage professional is to look at, you know, some of the uh, different lenders out there, loan structures, interest rates, you know, to make sure that, you know, you as a property investor are getting the best deal out there. So, I'm also a branch manager like uh, Roger with the Property Club. And, uh, yeah, so I'm... Um, uh, located in New South Wales, but currently uh, up in Darwin for a little while. So tonight, uh, you know, in the next uh, few minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at three different things. We're going to have a look at the concept of uh, comprehensive credit scoring, and we're going to have a look at living expenses, and then we're going to have a look at the reason why you should get a financial health check done. So the first two, the credit scoring and also the living expenses, uh, in, in the current environment, you know, they're becoming very, very important and they can actually make or break a person's application. So let's have a look at comprehensive credit scoring. So if you've never ever seen your credit score before, uh, a credit score uh, gives the bank an indication as to whether you're going to be a good risk to the bank or whether you're going to be a bad risk to the bank. And uh, previously, the banks couldn't see everything, okay? So they couldn't actually see your repayment history or your repayment behaviour. So now it's been mandated with many banks that they have to send through, uh, you know, your, your, your credit history over to Equifax, you know, and they're the credit reporting agency. So it doesn't matter, with, you know, which bank you are, uh, Banks now are able to see everything that you're doing, and the result is, you know, is that they uh, have a very, very good idea as to whether they should actually be borrowing you money or not. So, with comprehensive credit scoring, uh, it's more credit-based behaviour now. So, as we're seeing on the screen, uh, you know, things such as paying your debt on time, or even if you're late on your debt, you know, uh, you know that will start to appear on your credit file. 
But what it allows you to do as a consumer, it gives you the power to take greater control of how a potential lender is going to see you as a client. Okay, because you can make sure that your credit file is nice and healthy and, uh, and things that need to be fixed on it uh, you know, prior to getting financed, we can have a look at that and we can let you know some of the things uh, that you may need to do. So, uh, as I said before, uh, you know, comprehensive credit scoring uh, is where now lenders have to share your data with your credit companies. Uh, before, uh, the banks were able to see a general picture of what your you know, credit score looked like, but now they have a lot more information, such as the type of credit too. So, you know, right from credit cards through to home loans, personal loans, even things like zip uh, and those Harvey Norman, uh, you know, no deposit, no interest, no repayments, you know, the banks couldn't previously see any of that but now they are able to access that information and they can see you know, uh, you know, all the different loans that you have. So I guess, you know, uh, as I've been saying in the first couple of minutes, uh, so this data allows uh, the lender to make the right decision based around your score. So we'll have a look at, at, it, at um, an example of score in a minute, but if you get your credit score done and there are issues with it, some of the things that you can do to actually improve your credit score is lower your credit card limits. You know, we see clients these days that have got $50,000, $60,000 worth of credit cards, but they don't really need them. So a simple thing you can do is credit cards that you don't need, Reduce the limits. Um, if you've got multiple personal loans you know, and credit cards, try and consolidate those, okay? So you don't have credit everywhere. Because again, you know, when a bank looks at your credit score, if you've got credit cards with different banks and personal loans with different banks, uh, you know, that will bring your credit score down. Limit your applications for credit. Uh, a lot of people will go online, you know, to the bank's websites, and that, you know, and, and they just want to see how much they can borrow, uh, and they'll put in pre-approvals everywhere. So what they don't realise is that every single time you put a pre-approval in, that bank does do a check on you, and that does get marked on your credit file. So the more you know pre-approvals you put in, the lower your credit score is going to be. So what we say to people is just do your homework first, talk to your bank, talk to your brokers, and just make sure that if you are going to apply for a home loan, that you can get it before putting in applications all over the place. Make your repayments on time. And as we'll show you soon, um, you know, a lot of people these days, uh, you know, if you've got credit card payments or home loan payments, uh, they think, oh, look, you know, it's still on the 15th of the month, but that's all right, I'll pay it you know, three, four days later because you might have some other bills that are coming up. And if you're doing those kinds of things, uh, that will now show on your credit file also. So if the banks can see that you're late on your, you know, repayments, uh, whether they're car loans or housing repayments, uh, credit cards, etc., then they're going to be less likely to give you a loan. So pay your rent and your bills on time, okay? Because these uh, they're not showing at the moment, but uh, but this is the next stage where you know even your rent uh, uh, repayments and you know, other types of bills like power, uh, internet, etc. Uh, if you lay them those also, they could potentially start to show on your credit file too. And especially your mortgage, okay? So your mortgage is one of your biggest assets. Uh, and if you know that is regularly behind, you know even by two, three, four days, and you're still making those repayments, uh, you know, when you go and apply for a loan, that is definitely going to negatively impact your application. So what we're just saying on this particular slide here is give yourself the best possible chance when you are going to apply for finance, and just get into uh, you know into some good habits, uh, and just make sure that your you know bills are paid on time. Uh, you're paying off your credit card uh, each month in full. Uh, you know, that's also a good idea because you know when the bank does do a credit check, 
that they can see that you are paying, you know, your credit cards off uh, in full each month, then, you know, uh, it just shows the banks that you are credit worthy also. So for those of you that have seen your credit score, you would have seen something like this. Okay, so you would have a score, and in this particular case, uh, the actual score is 930. Uh, and you know, this is a good score, okay, because it's in the green, it's fairly high. So that's the first thing that the bank's going to have a look at. Another thing that the bank is going to have a look at now with comprehensive credit scoring is this thing down here and that there is a percentage chance that you're going to default on your loan repayments in the next 12 months. So in this particular case, it's very, very low, and this is where it should be anyway, you know, so less than 1%. So if your score is down here somewhere, uh, you know, then it just shows the bank that, that you can potentially be a good risk. So the other thing that the bank is now going to have a look at, and this is what we, we've been saying uh, in the first couple of minutes here, is your worst repayment history, okay, or H, uh, RHI in the last 24 months. So if you're the kind of person that's always late on your credit card payment, your mortgage payments, etc., it's going to show uh, over here now. So once you know banks, uh, you know can see quite easily that you're the kind of person that's not paying your debts on time, um, it's going to be very, very hard for you to actually go out to the marketplace and get credit. So your credit score, uh, the first one, uh, 930, very, very important. If you haven't seen your credit file, have a look at it. Your percentage chance that you're going to default and your worst repayment history. So you've got access to a credit file, I would suggest you get it done and just have a look and just make sure that there's nothing on there that's going to impact your uh, application in the future. So let's have a look at another one, okay? So in this particular case here, it's 429, okay? So that by itself isn't going to actually, you know, uh, get your application declined. The bank will have a closer look. But look over here, you know, in this uh, case here, you know, there's a 17% chance that this particular person is going to default on their file. So that's going to be a red flag, you know, to the bank pretty well straight away. And down here, you know, the worst repayment history in the last 24 months is about two. Okay, so, so the fact that the score is 429, which isn't overly high, that there's a 17% chance they're going to default and they've got worst repayment histories, uh, you know, their application will just about get declined. So it wouldn't even really be worth putting in that application until they're able to fix their credit score. So as I was saying before, the banks are able to see, uh, you know, all your uh, accounts now. So, if, so for example, in this particular case, uh, the bank can see the date that the actual file was opened. So, so in this case, it's uh, November 2010. The actual status of the file is open still. The latest limit is 308.721, and they started off at 321. So the bank can see, okay, well, you know, this particular person is trying to pay their home loan down. Uh, you know, whether or not that's going to impact, you know, solely and wholly on your application is up to each and every individual lender, but at least they're getting a good idea as to, you know, so what you're doing. And then your repayment history down here, you can see that every single month, uh, you know, they are, you know, so keeping a track and just making sure that the actual repayments are being made. So that's comprehensive credit scoring. The other thing that's coming up more and more these days from a finance point of view is, is, is uh, living expenses, okay, or HEM. So HEMS is the Henderson Expenditure Measure. So what that really is, is that it's a way for the bank uh, to be able to work out, you know, what your living expenses are. So I'll just make all this up, uh, come up here. So with HEM or living expenses, you know, as I said at the start, this can make or break your application. Okay, so if your living expenses are very, very high, the banks do take this into account now, uh, you know, when they're doing their serviceability. This particular concept of HEM, you know, it was very, very controversial 
because it underestimates people's non-essential living expenses. And, you know, Roger and I were actually having a chat about that uh, with one of our clients that we're dealing with at the moment. But him, you know, it, um, it estimates what a person's living expenses is going to be as a single person, as a couple, as a couple with one child, two children, three children, but it doesn't take into account that some people might have private health insurance, some people might have, you know, private school fees, some people might have car loans, some don't. So it was, a, you know, it is quite a crude way to actually estimate what expenses are, but nonetheless, you know, some banks are still using HAM, whereas other banks are now getting a little bit tighter. So, you know, this came under, you know, so quite a bit of, uh, scrutiny uh, in the last uh, you know, Bank and Royal Commission and hence you know now a lot of the banks are changing the way that they measure people's living expenses. So whenever we do an application for anybody we always send out what's called a budget planner and a lot of people think you know that this might be a pain but the reason we send this out to people is so that you have a very very good idea as to what your living expenses are going to be. So, this also allows you to take control of your budget. So, for example, if you are looking at buying another property, but you've never ever done this, then how does one know whether or not they can afford it, you know, to buy another property? So, if your bank or your broker does ask you to complete one of these, it's for a reason, and, and, and that main reason is that we're trying to work out what your living expenses are, so that we can input, uh, you know, input that figure into the servicing calculator to decide whether or not uh, you know, the loan is going to work with that, uh, with that particular lender. Interest rates um, you know, are at an all-time low at the moment, so if you haven't checked your interest rates lately, uh, you know, please feel free to give me a call. You know, that's something that we can do for you fairly easily. Uh, Variable rates for banks, you know, on average are about 2.9. Okay, so now that's interest only if you're a property investor. We can get fixed rates, you know, that are quite a bit cheaper than that. So you can get fixed rates on about 2.49. So again and again, we see a lot of property investors with their portfolio, their interest rates are 3.5, 3.6%. And even if you can't refinance, you know, even if you don't have the serviceability to be able to do that, you can still fix your rate with your particular lender and you can still get a really, really good saving. So if you haven't checked those out, you know, please do so. Now, if you're in a situation where you know, the banks are saying to you, well, look, sorry, but you have to go principal and interest and you can't refinance either because your income's not enough, then, you know, there's lots and lots of banks out there where your principal and interest rate is about 2.29. So yes, you might have to pay principal and interest, but if you can drop the rate down to 2.29, you know, then that's certainly going to soften the blow. So owner occupies even better. Uh, you know, you can get variable rates from 2.19. Uh, the banks are offering fixed rates, you know, for your own occupied home loan these days from about 1.89%. So if your rates are higher than what you're seeing on the screen, certainly a good idea to give the bank a call, have a chat to them. If they're not prepared to negotiate, then, you know, you can by all means give me a call and, uh, and we can have a chat to you. So for our regular clients and for property investors, one thing that we always say to people is get a regular financial health check done. Um, you know, we all get up in the morning, we work hard for our money. So it's very, very important to make sure that our money is working you know, hard for us also. So with our clients that ask us for a regular financial health check, we'll have a look to see you know, if your properties have grown in value. If they have, and you want to harvest some of that equity, to be able to you know, buy another property, or you want to harvest the equity to do some renovations, then we can certainly advise whether or not you can do that. We'll check your borrowing capacity, and these things change from time to time, because sometimes the banks tighten up for different reasons, other times you know, they ease up. So you might have done uh, a borrowing capacity maybe a year ago, and you may not have been able to borrow much, but if the banks have eased up, your situation you know, could change. 
Well, make sure that you're on the best possible rate. Um, if, if you can't refinance, we can certainly suggest ways that you can call your current lender and just have a chat to them to uh, get your rates down. Well, make sure that your current lender is still meeting your needs, you know. Um, uh, are they prepared, you know, to allow you to take equity out? Are they going to give you the most amount of money to buy another property, if that's what you're looking at? Uh, you know, are they giving you the best rate or are there better options out there? Um, if you are a property investor, we always say to people, make sure you've got a buffer sitting there in place. So when we do a regular financial health check, we'll have a look to see how much money you got as a buffer in case something happens. If your buffer is a little bit short, then we can certainly help to you know, sort of uh, rectify that too. And lastly, uh, if you're a property investor and you're buying properties so that you can retire, you want to uh, get those properties valued on a regular basis. And the reason for that is that you want to make sure that your properties are growing in value and that they are performing the way that you want. Okay, because a lot of people, you know, they buy properties and they never ever get them value. And then when they're ready to retire, if they haven't performed as well, then it's too late to do, you know, so very much about it. But if you're getting them valued on a regular basis, then at least you've got a very, very good idea as to how your retirement plan is tracking. So that's the um, my presentation for me. But if you would like to get in contact with me to you know just have a check about your rates or even to get a a, a, a comprehensive credit check done, uh, there's no you know charge for that. Uh, my details are on the screen, so please feel free to give me a call and uh, we'll have a chat. So I'm just going to change the screen back over now to Roger, and Roger I believe is going to introduce Anthony Edwards to you. Thank you, Roger. Okay, thank you and good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending tonight's webinar. Thanks, Joe, for that fantastic uh, update on what's happening in the finance world. And thank you, Roger. Um, I'll quickly go through some tips for property investment. So my name is Anthony Edwards. I've been with the uh, Property Club for over 12 years and I've been a property mentor for the last six years. Uh, myself and my wife have bought properties through the Property Club for quite some time and our children have actually uh, been there along the way as young adults, they're now uh, starting to to do the property investing themselves and purchasing their first investment properties at a young uh, or in their early twenties. Um, possibly because they've they've gone along the way and they've actually uh, lived lived the property investment journey we have over the last twelve years with the property club, and we've been able to put a team around ourselves and around them to uh, ensure that they do it in a in a safe uh, manner. So. Yes, we all know there is a risk with property investing and mistakes can be costly. At the Property Club, we give you a mentor. That's me. So we successfully invested in multiple properties and we're there to support you and guide you throughout the investment journey. This comes at no cost to you, the property investor. Okay. So at the Property Club, we encourage networking with other members we often hold workshops, webinars, and property tours. When we're allowed out, that is. We, we can get out and do some bus tours, take you around to properties in uh, wherever capital city we're going, and just getting a good hard look at the, uh, the lay down of the, uh, the property market in each state. So we do that as property mentors all the time, and we're able to assist you to do that as well along the way. During the 12 years we've invested in properties through the Property Club, and we've been able to do that and we've been able to network with other like-minded people and uh, enjoy the trip on the way. And while we've done that, we've had that mentor ourselves uh, that we can always bounce things off or ask questions. We've had the club that give us webinars and updates on you know, the latest finance information or what's happening with interest rates or just general um, experts come to talk to us about uh, you know, our accountant or, or even, um, you know, what we need to look at when we're doing building inspections, that type of thing. So this allows us to look at property investing from a national viewpoint and to assist in learning what is possible in all major capitals in Australia. 
At different times, markets will grow at different rates and allow opportunities to get into markets before the growth cycle or where we can invest property you know, better for your dollars. This also allows you to diversify your property portfolio. So, on the screen we see don't buy properties that cost you money every week to hold. So we provide the free cash flow analysis for each property at Property Club. We want to ensure that the member can afford to invest in any property that you may purchase. So we do the numbers based on actual costs, rental appraisals, and also your circumstances, your individual uh, financial position or your individual uh, income to calculate what the cash flow is to hold that particular property. Now at the moment, most properties that club offers are in the cash flow positive situation after tax deductions. So therefore, they're not actually um, costing you any money to put in yourself. You're actually in a positive uh, cash flow after all your deductions and your tax. The type of properties that we have in the property club are house and land. We have apartments, one, two or three bedrooms. We have townhouses because all these could give you different advantages in the property market and different tax advantages. The length of builder warranty and product warranties in the new properties are longer. That's why we specifically uh, our philosophy is for new properties. So you get the longest life out of the product and also the warranties that the builder gives you with the product. Okay. At the Property Club, we have many experienced researchers and property mentors that look over every property in the area to ensure it's the right surroundings, the right facilities for a successful investment over the long term. And it is a long term. Investing in property is not short term. You need to take a long term approach. We need to look, when we're looking at research, we look at the demographics, the population growth, the infrastructure in the area, what jobs are available for your renters or tenants what schools are nearby and the shopping locally. Currently, research is seeing cost increases from builders who are starting to see materials starting to rise in price from the current shortages of supply. So that will continue to happen as, as time goes on, prices tend to go up. So, as I said before, our philosophy is to buy new properties and hold for the long term. Otherwise, you can just come up with lots of expenses, costs and wasted opportunities for growth. If you buy new properties, you're not renovating, having renovating costs, you're not you know, having to pay multiple stamp duties or capital gains tax unless you sell the property. So this chart from CoreLogic actually shows the greater number of years a property is held for before selling, the more chance of making a greater profit. So over the longer term, you have a fairly high um, percentage chance of making a greater profit the longer you keep it. Another way we spread the investment risk is by diversification, buying multiple properties in different locations and also different types of properties. As I said before, we can have apartments, townhouses or and new house and land and they can be in most major capital cities of Australia. That way if a city or a market has an issue and not all your eggs are in one basket and it's likely others, other areas will not be affected at the same time. At the Property Club the majority of properties we invest in are in the major capital cities of Australia. By way of example we've bought our properties over the years in a range of capital cities being Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne and also Darwin. This spreads the exposure to many markets and also means that currently we pay uh, no land tax on those properties. So at the Property Club, we have strict research criteria based on 13 critical factors. And on the left-hand side, you'll see there things like property position, shopping centers in the area, close to transport, employment, these are all things that the tenant will be looking for when they want to uh, rent your property. On the right hand side, we focus on things like the builder that we're working with and how the construction is. Is it, is it heavy duty construction? Will it rent well? 
and what are the numbers or the cash flow. Also, style is important for longevity and, and to ensure you don't have to um, be updating your property all the time. Will the valuation stack up at the contract price? And what is the wow factor? That means does it have a view or close to the city, close to schools or hospital? That type of thing. This is what the researcher will look for and is analysed on each property. So you get a mentor, you get an experienced property investor that has uh, any questions that you have, you can bounce things off them, they support you. And, and just like tonight with this presentation, we've talked of lots of different information. It can be a lot at once, but that's what your mentor is there for. If you've got a question about something that you've heard, you're not quite sure what it means, by all means, come back and ask your property mentor or send them an email. They'll just give you a quick explanation and help you through that. I've had a property mentor for the last 12 years and still have questions. Bounce things off them and get another opinion on my property investment questions. As Jolinko explained, a specialist broker can choose from many lenders to match the right one for your circumstances and get the best fit and the best deal for you, not for the bank. These brokers have the ability to choose from many different lenders and place you in the right hands and, and get you the loan through the, the, the loan that suits you best and is most beneficial to you, not to the bank. So who pays for all these services? We don't ask you as a member to pay. These services are not, no cost to you. The vendor or the builder pay a fee to the property club when a member purchases a property from, from us via the property club. So those, those fees are reinvested into all the services we provide and the income earned applied to educate and help you. Along that journey, we've been able to keep getting educated from the property club with information, seminars, and changes to regulations, that type of thing. What we need to keep up to date with our property and our property investing. Okay, so this introductory webinar has given you an overview of property investing with the property club. Everyone may be at different stages in their life and at different stages in the property property investment journey. They must maybe just learning about what is possible. At the property club, we also have a young investors club. So if any younger people or, or your children are interested in learning about property investment as my children have we can have the right people in the right seminars for those to learn before they start investing we can review your individual situation and we can help you understand more about arranging a one-on-one -on -one or a chat with your property mentor these are the type of uh, topics we, we will discuss and we'll go into further detail of your own uh, circumstances and answer any questions you may have along the way and just make you comfortable with the property investment uh, journey. So we will be making contact um, after this webinar and your property mentor may get in touch with you. If you haven't got a property mentor, one will be allocated and they will be in touch to see if you have any further questions. And um, we also attach a financial uh, wealth check to that email we'll send out, which Joe mentioned before, um, th that we can discuss together for your situation. So we need to understand what your investment possibilities are, and that will give us a summary, and that our broker will be able to assess your borrowing capacity and whether you're um, in a financial position to invest in property, or we can also help you um, with the information you need to. To, to learn to what you actually need to do to start that process. So that, that'll give us a good idea of that position. Existing members, yeah, if you know your property mentor, you can also get in touch with them as well. But remember, 12 years ago, I decided to take action and to, to do this, to invest in property and to make uh, our financial future uh, more secure with property investment. And that's what we did. We took that action. And today, 12 years later, it, um, we can look back and we're still getting advice, information and learning about property investment. Thank you for your attention tonight. I um, 
really appreciate uh, you all attending and we will be touching base shortly. As you know, Australian property prices continue to rise in value over the longer term. At Property Club, we're here to assist potential property investors, investors to take action and avoid the traps and make it work for you also. We started our prop, pro, property investment journey approximately 12 years ago and we're lucky we did. And we've managed to, to take that action and grow a property portfolio. Excellent, Anthony. That was very, very well done. Thank you so much for your presentation and for the information you've provided. I think there's a lot of very, very good information. Now, just to let you know, uh, this uh, this uh, webinar has been recorded and we'll be sending out a recording to all of you who have registered. So uh, feel free to take down your notes and please feel free to contact your property mentor and ask them any questions. Now, if you don't know who your property mentor is, please send me an email and I will make sure that we that a, a property mentor is allocated to you. So if you don't know that, please get in touch with me uh, and let me know who let me know that you uh, of this situation and I will make sure that someone is allocated. OK. And as Anthony says, uh, you will be in uh, uh, a property mentor will be in touch with you over the next couple of days. Uh, we'll also send you the form to complete and send it back. So again, thank you, Anthony and Joe for presenting this evening. And we look forward to catching up with uh, with you uh, at at some point uh, in the in the future. So good night and thank you everyone.